Think back to a time you caught a really bad case of the flu. Remember sweating in your five layers of clothing, but also shivering. I don't know about you, but when I catch a cold, I start to imagine all the worst possible case scenarios that could be happening to me. What if it's more than just a cold and I'm going to die of a 105 degree fever? Also, aside from that, I also begin thinking of all of my individual proteins denaturing under the 105 degree heat and I start thinking, oh my gosh, my life is going to end. But basically what I'm trying to say is that we've all caught a cold before, which means we've all been to the doctor, the place where we get poked and prodded in places that we don't want anyone seeing, and a place where we have to get awful medications to take. But even though we may all dislike the doctor's office, we can all agree that it's very important for our health. You go to the doctor for yearly checkups and sometimes they can even save your lives. Basically, they're the reason for our health and our livelihood. Imagine how amazing it would be to be part of this elite community of lifesavers. And that is how I want to contribute to society in the future. Hi, my name is Ivy Wang and I've chosen to pursue pediatrics this year in ISM2. I would like to start off with my quote, and this is a quote by Walt Disney which says, we keep moving forward, opening new doors, and doing new things, because we're curious and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. And I chose this quote because last year, I actually chose a totally different topic, international business, and I think by choosing pediatrics this year, which was something that I had never thought about doing, it really opened a new door for me, and it's leading me down a new path that I never thought of doing previous before ISM2. So on to my interviews. I had a total of five interviews, but I'm only going to really focus on one of them because uh, this was with Dr. Solomon, and she was the only hospitalist aside from my mentor, whom I mentor uh, who I interviewed. And this is really different from like someone who works in private practice because um, you see different things, you interact with different kinds of people, so I just really want to focus on this. And she was really amazing. She was my fourth interviewee. And I learned a lot about her life, her daily life. She says she'll go to work from like 7 a.m., 7 p.m. sometimes. But because she's a hospitalist, um, like the shifts are really sort of random and sporadic. And you could say that you're going to get home at 7 p.m. when really you're getting home at like 11 p.m. And I also talked a lot about how she deals with seeing sick children every day because it's definitely really hard to see a two-year-old girl with cancer or a little kid who can't live the life that he's supposed to live because of a medical condition. And she said that really there's no way to sort of fight it. You just have to go into doctor mode and you just have to tell yourself that you're there for a reason and that this little kid is depending on you and their family is depending on you, so you can't let your emotions get to you. You just have to be really focused in what you're doing. Because essentially they look to you for help and you're the only person in their life right now that can give, you, that can give them hope that they need. She also works with my mentor, Dr. Okada, and because Dr. Okada goes to both the Dallas and the Plano Hospital, um, sometimes she'll see Dr. Solomon and send children up to her. And on to my research. I'm going to focus on two articles. The first one is Pain in Children, Recent Advances and Ongoing Challenges. And this really gave me a lot of ideas for original work and final product because this is definitely a problem that's really serious in pediatrics right now because there's not enough data that comes along with pain assessment in children because a lot of the trials are conducted for adults and adults are very different from children and plus no mom wants to give their child up for some strange medical experiment that's supposedly going to improve pain assessment. And aside from that, children is a really broad term because there's a lot of different age ranges in children. A toddler is really different from a 14-year-old boy in middle school because of um, all of the changes that happen during puberty and the development that goes on in the body and there just really isn't a solidified effective way that someone can treat and assess pain in children because of how little data we have for that. And so far the only thing that really works for everyone as a whole are prescription drugs and everyone knows that there can also be a lot of pros and cons to that. And so I started focusing more on prescription drugs and that led to my second article which is 
prescription drug abuse, specifically on opioids. And so there are three main different types of drugs. There are opioids, and they basically relieve pain, and there's CNS depressants and stimulants. And oftentimes, these things can really get involved with drug abuse and getting ad addicted. And this became the basis for my original work because uh, I found it really interesting that the highest amount of drug abusers are actually 18 to 25, which is right above the supposed child age range. So I was wondering if I could do something that could educate children before they got to that age range so it would prevent them from taking drugs to the max and become addicted. And so for my original work, um, I basically created a pamphlet, sort of. I have it right here. And basically, it's for children to read. I mean, we can read it too, and adults can definitely read it if they want. But it's really focused on children because um, it's really important to educate these kids on drugs and really show them that it's more than just something that's bad. Like, there's a reason as to why it's bad, and it's really good for children to understand that. So here's a little close-up of what it looks like. And the left side is basically the front side, and I fold it up in threes. And then the right side is like the inside. And it's basically this guy on the very left, and his name is Billy, and he takes the children on an adventure through the body to see the neurons and the neurotransmitters and how drugs can affect the body and what happens when you take too many drugs. And it ends up telling kids that if you take a lot of dopamine, um, well, if you get a lot of dopamine, you're gonna become euphoric, and then that can really lead to a lot of addiction because euphoria is something that the body really enjoys. And this was actually this doesn't look like a lot of work, but it actually took me 27 hours because I started with a lot of research and I had prior knowledge because of um, like AP biology and AP psychology, but um, there was still a lot of stuff that I really had to research and it, I also had to find a way to create diagrams that were really simple for kids to understand because in AP Bio there's a lot of diagrams for neurons, neurons and neurotransmitters but they're really complicated even for 16 year old uh, high school students so I had to find a way to create this information and sort of dumb it down so that children who are just learning how to read or a little like maybe 7 to 10 years old would really be able to understand this and after I finished researching it, I started planning, and this is sort of like a rough draft where all I did was just draw what I wanted to see and what I wanted to happen. And this took uh, a few hours because I really had to think about the placement of everything and uh, visual appearance and something that would make kids look at it and want to actually read this. And then after that, I created a final copy and I drew out exactly what I wanted to see and then I solidified the lines and then erased anything, that, any marks that I didn't want to see. And then after doing that, I scanned it onto Microsoft Paint and I took a mouse and I colored in every single thing and it took forever and my hand was cramping up. And I actually started this like the day before the original work was due. So I was cramming to get everything in and all the color and so then it turned out to be like that, which I'm really proud of. And I would love to apply this to the real world, maybe add it to a bunch of pamphlets that you can see at the doctor's office or something just for kids to look or if they're interested and they're exploring the doctor's office, they want to pick up something and just read and learn about something. And I talked to my mentor about this. She gave me a lot of really great advice, um, a lot of ways I could change up my word choice so that it would be easier for kids to understand and maybe some more background color because I made it I made it just white because of I didn't want to sort of wash out the colors of the of the children but she gave me ideas on sort of lower um, colors and hues and everything and on to my mentorship my mentor is Dr. Okada and she's the head of the emergency department at Children's Medical Center in Plano and Coach Goff, when she showed me this video of this documentary taken at Children's Medical Center in Dallas, I just looked at, like, I just saw what she was doing, how she was rushing everywhere, and, like, um, really in the zone and just helping kids out. I was just like, wow, if, if she could be my mentor, that would be so amazing because 
Like, I've watched Grey's Anatomy, I've seen all these medical shows, and her life is basically a TV show, so I <laughs> thought it was really great. And she, I've only gone on two mentor visits with her. The first one, we just sat down, we talked, and we came up with like foundation, the foundation for the entire year. But the second mentor visit, which I had last Saturday at 6 a.m., we actually went to, I followed her around as she went to all the children's and all the rooms that they were in, and it was just such an incredible experience. I know because of HIPAA, I can't really say anything about it, but it was something that I never thought I would be part of because I've never really considered myself a medicine kind of person. And aside from being wowed by like all the different things that she does, I really experienced a lot of gratitude for myself and for my own health. It really sort of opened up my eyes and made me see just how much of a blessing that my life is because there's a lot of kids out there who don't get anything near what I have. And I also, aside from that, I also learned a lot of other things like how you talk to patients. I realized every single time that Dr. Okada talked to a kid or a, a family member, she sat down next to them or she got down on one knee or anything to sort of bridge the distance between doctor and patient. She just wanted to be there for them. She really wanted to make them seem like they were really welcome there and that, um, that she, was, she would be there for them. Like uh, when talking about treatment plans and everything, she would be really cheerful but also really serious. She would also praise the parents and also the children. Uh, I remember one parent talked about um, sort of like waking up really early in the morning or something to help their kid and all, I remember all she said was good job like that's really hard to do and I'm really I'm really glad that you were able to get up that early in the morning and help your child out because you know your child the best and you're the best sort of diagnoser and just this whole atmosphere and this whole emotion and feeling that she gave off was just really nice and something that I don't normally see because normally in a doctor's office I see them as the doctor not someone who really cares about you. And finally I've had such a huge interest in science for a really long time and I'm really glad that finally this year in ISM I was able to pursue something scientifically related and I really want to use this year in ISM to my greatest advantage. It's only been one semester in pediatrics, but my knowledge, my knowledge has increased tremendously. And I'm really excited for what the year has to offer. And I hope to continue learning about the field of healthcare, sort of dipping my toes in new waters and figuring things out and see if pediatrics is really something that I want to pursue. And who knows, maybe one day you'll be taking your children to Dr. Wang. Thanks.